Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. There's a real urgency here. She's at school today um, with, with uh, no one really qualified to give her um, insulin. We begin tonight with a Valley News Live exclusive. After a Facebook post went viral, one mother of a diabetic little girl reached out to us and is finally seeing change. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Two Fargo parents are voicing their concern over a medication distribution policy within the school district. And because they're speaking up, they're seeing change. Valley News Team's Christine Stanwood sits down with the parents. She is a very spirited child. <laughs> Um, she makes friends everywhere she goes. That's six-year-old Lucy. She's kind of like our crazy kid. We always wonder where she came from. After coming back from summer camp this year, Lucy started experiencing pain. So her parents, Jill and Ike, took her to a walk-in clinic and received life-changing news. Got a call back saying, you know, does she have diabetes? And we said, well, of course not. She doesn't have diabetes. We'll just call our doctor and get this straightened out. Lucy was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes just four months ago. She's taking it like a <laughs> champ, really. Right. I mean, she's way better at it as far as <laughs> keeping it together than we are. Right. <laughs> Being new parents to a diabetic child, Jill and Ike began asking questions, including who will be able to give their daughter insulin at school if her blood sugar spikes. She gets hot, she gets sweaty. Um, she doesn't feel well, gets kind of a tummy ache. The Morshes monitor Lucy's levels through an app while Lucy's at school. You know, already it's starting to go back up. But when they discovered the school nurse, who only works two hours a week, was the only one trained to give Lucy her medicine in an emergency, they knew they had to take action. It's, it's just frustrating. It's frustrating. You know, we're not trying to... Start a war. Start a war or anything. <laughs> we, we want everybody, you know, we just want everybody to be... Lucy and everybody else to just be safe at school. The policy's there. It just needs to be implemented. Fargo Public Schools superintendent says that policy needs to be followed. If we do have a situation where monitoring of insulin needs to be closely monitored, we want that plan already in place. And if for some reason that plan is not in place, we need to get one in place. This afternoon, Jill received a phone call from Lucy's principal saying that starting this Thursday, the school will be training employees to give Lucy and other students help with medication. Through um, Fargo Cass Public Health, we work with them to make sure that we can get people um, that are trained and able to do those types of things. Now, Lucy will be able to have a safety net in case of an emergency. There's nothing that I wouldn't do to... Um, to protect you and keep you safe and and um, that's why we're that's why we do this which makes the fight well worth it in Fargo Christine Stanwood Valley News Live we just spoke with Lucy's Lucy's mother Jill and she tells us that the school will be training five employees the Morse family says that they couldn't be happier and it's the best case scenario for them if you need help uncovering an issue in your community here's some advice call our whistleblower hotline 701 237-6576. We'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. A major loss for a small town after a massive fire and strong winds burned down and destroyed a local business. Hubbard Feed Mill in Grandin, North Dakota caught fire around 10 this morning and crews of all sorts are still there. Valley News Team's Nicole Johnson joins us live telling us how and why this fire was so difficult to fight. Nicole? What started out as a small fire this morning took a building the size of these grain bins right here to the ground, turning it into this. It's about 90% gone and crews are using a backhoe to get the rest. They're calling it a total loss. Those in town say the mill makes animal feed and employs around 10 people. Nearby houses were evacuated this morning and crews say strong winds and a lack of water made the damage worse. The city water was turned off and volunteer crews from all over hauled in water to help out. They get called all hours of the night. I mean, middle of the night, the alarm goes off, they're up and they're going. I mean, they don't think about it, they just do it. You get something of this magnitude, um, of course they all come flying when they're requested, which is a wonderful, um, wonderful thing in a rural setting. 
We still don't know the cause of the fire, but those strong winds and lack of water are to blame for some of the damage. Reporting in Grandin, North Dakota, Nicole Johnson, Valley News Live. Thanks, Nicole. Now, fire crews are expected to stay through the night to keep this area under control. Those same high winds today caused this building that was under construction to collapse. The structure is just behind the Flying J in Fargo and was knocked down after wind gusts reached close to 60 miles per hour. Let's head over to Hutch Johnson to see if those winds are letting up at all. Hutch? There is some good news as far as wind gusts go. Here in the Southern Valley in the Fargo area, no gusts reported at the top of the hour, but a 16 mile per hour northwest breeze. However, the James and Cheyenne River Valleys still seeing gusts over 30 miles per hour this evening after peak gusts hit the 70 mile per hour mark or very close to it earlier today. Now, we did have a big change in temperature. The north winds really cooling things off a 43 degree change from 24 hours ago at this time in Bemidji. Hey, we still have a deck of clouds over us right now, but we can see a little sunshine off to the west. It looks breezy, not as gusty as earlier today and definitely jacket worthy this evening. I'll have details on some much quieter, calmer weather here in the forecast in a few moments. All right, calmer for us all. Thanks. Yes. Grand Forks police are once again searching for a woman robber after another armed bank robbery. The Citizens Community Credit Union was robbed today around noon. Police say the suspect showed a gun and left with cash. No customers were in the bank at the time and no one was injured. The woman appeared to leave the bank on foot but may have gotten into a nearby getaway car. A Bremer bank, bank was also robbed by a woman on Washington Street just two weeks ago in the community. Police say it's possible the two robberies are connected. Today's female suspect is described as possibly Native American, around 40 years old, 5'4", and heavy set. She was wearing dark colored clothing and a stocking hat. Police are expected to release video surveillance photos of the suspect soon, but if you have any information on this case, call police right away. A man has been charged in the death of a three-year-old boy. 23-year-old Sterling Anderson has been charged with two counts of second-degree murder in connection with the death of Stephen Warren. Warren died at Sanford last week after deputies responded to a report of a child who had bumped his head. Autopsy results show head and extensive abdominal trauma. The Ramsey County Medical Examiner says that Warren's death is due to his injuries and is calling his death a homicide. Now, Anderson admitted to striking the child because he would not stop crying. Today marks the kickoff of UND's 20th annual week-long clothesline project. It's a startling reminder of the ongoing problem of sexual assault and domestic violence in our community. Now, Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us what's happening and how you can take part in it. The sound of the bell and whistle at this display reminds everyone of some startling statistics. The bell reminds us a woman dies every 10 to 12 minutes in the U.S. as the result of intimate personal violence. The whistle signifies that women report a rape during every minute of every day. CVIC alone um, had over uh, close to 2,800 clients this past year in 2014. And that's just in Grand Forks? That's just in Grand Forks County and yeah. this area, yes. The t-shirts strung on the clotheslines were made by the victims and families of victims of sexual assault and domestic violence from across North Dakota. The t-shirts have the messages of people who survived. The organizers of this event, the UND Women's Center, is now bringing their message to organizations and classrooms around the area. We actually went out to both Central High School and Red River High School earlier last week and we talked about healthy relationships again and um, kind of the effects of abuse and kind of the statistics of how very real it is. Now on Thursday, they're hoping for better weather. A take back the night rally and march is planned down University Avenue from Memorial Union to the Gamma Phi sorority and back. The featured speaker at the rally is an ex-exotic dancer who is the survivor of child abuse and rape. Also featured in the display area is a place setting in memory of Drew Shadeen, a UND student who was kidnapped and murdered in 2003. In Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. The clothesline project display is open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on the second floor of UND's Memorial Union this week. We have a full schedule of this week's events online. Just head to valleynewslive.com and then click on this story.
Fargo City Commissioners have approved the hiring of David Todd, who was selected by the Police Chief Hiring Committee tonight. Todd has been serving as the interim chief for nearly a year after Keith Turner stepped down from the position. Todd says his key concerns going forward are street crimes and drugs. Well, later on Valley News Live at 6, how a new app can get you the help you need regarding the city of Fargo. And as a cold front blasted through the northern plains, it brought wind and much cooler weather. Doreen capturing flying stalks of corn. A little calmer weather in the forecast, and I'll have hour-by-hour details next.